I am so excited. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about probably one of our best brand new features is the auto planner has been completely revamped, redesigned to help you design a high performing wireless network in pretty much a click of a button. So I cannot wait to show you how amazing our new auto planner feature is inside of Echohel AI Pro. So why don't we take a look? What we can see here is that we have our project file inside of our Echohel AI Pro and it's pretty much all prepared and ready to go. So what I have done is I've imported my floor plans, I have scaled the floor plans, I've drawn my walls, I've drawn my attenuation areas, I've drawn my areas, I've drawn my exclusion areas. I've also created a 3D building because we are doing a design now across three floors. So I've uh, done my alignment points and we can see that the building is all happy, it's green, it's good to go. So we are now ready to start designing a wireless network across three floors. Now, if I was quite new to Wi-Fi, designing a wireless network across multiple floors, I would, I would personally find a little bit intimidating. I wouldn't necessarily be too sure where I would need to place the access points. Also, if I take it from the other perspective about being a Wi-Fi pro for a, quite a little bit of time now, when you design Wi-Fi across multiple floors, this can be quite time consuming. So using the auto planner feature can really help people that are new to Wi-Fi as well as the Wi-Fi Pro, saving time and helping people get the right locations right first time. So what do we need to do to run an auto planner inside of Echohel AI Pro? Well, let me show you. First of all, I'm gonna go back to the full screen mode so we can see the uh, floor plan nice and comfortably now. To run the auto planner, I need to come underneath the design workspace. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across to here and find this blue icon. It looks very similar to the simulated access point icon, but it's blue and it's got some magic sprinkles coming off the side of it. When I click on this icon, it's gonna pop up this window. This is where we can configure the parameters for the auto planner tool. So what we can do is select our access point. If we click on this option. What I can do now is I can search for an access point if I want to, or I can just scroll through, look and find the AP I want to see what I want to use. But I'm happy to use this access point right here, which is the Extreme Wireless AP4000. And it's telling us that this plan will cover the three maps inside of our building. It's telling us the transmit power it's gonna use for our different radios for the 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz and six gigahertz. Quick thing to mention here, in my coverage requirement profile, I have set that I've turned all of the 2.4 requirements off. So I'm just designing for five and six gigahertz. We are now ready to hit create a plan if we want to, if you don't want to configure any more advanced options, but I'm just going to take a sneak peek at what these advanced options are. So if I click on this, we now have the option to change the transmitting power for our different radios. We can also change the height of the antenna if, and the access point. If we know it's gonna be slightly higher than um, the normal default or it's gonna be slightly lower, we can configure this here. The next thing that we see is our area. So each floor I have drawn a coverage area and inside of that area, I've got devices with SLAs. If you wanna configure them or reconfigure them, you can just click on this configure option and it's gonna pop up this window and here is where we can make some of these changes. The next option we have here is optimized with capacity. If you want the auto planner to take into consideration your capacity requirements that you set, you simply toggle this button on or off. Likewise, if you want the auto planner to design based on mobile devices, you would just toggle this on or off as well. The next options that we have is to configure our channels. So on 2.4 gigahertz, we know we want to stick to a channel 1611 plan. And for five gigahertz, we have the option to select uh, all of the five gigahertz channels. If we are designing for an environment that we know has got effect by DFS uh, radar activity on the channels we want to use, what we can do is we could come into here and just simply unselect some of those channels that we know are affected by the radar activity. If we are in an area that's not affected by radar activity, then fantastic, great, we can leave them all turned on. It will also depend on your regulatory domain where you are in the world, what channels you have access to. And that's for five and for six gigahertz. So the other thing that we can do here is configure what channel width we want to use. So 20 megahertz wide, 40 megahertz wide, 80 megahertz wide, or 160. For now, I'm gonna to stick to a 20 megahertz wide channel plan on five gigahertz, because this is a multi-floor building. 
and it's just unselected some of the channels here so i'm going to select these ones again and actually i'm going to not i'm going to leave them ones excluded because i know that they are affected by radar activity for this uh, environment and finally we can select our six gigahertz channels now bear in mind you might not be seeing all of these channels here depending on where you are in the world and where you've got your preferences set in Echo ai pro i've changed mine to say that i'm in the united states that's why I have all of the options for the six gigahertz channels. But when I have it set to the UK, I only have options to the Uni 5 band. I'm gonna to stick to 80 megahertz wide. And then the final thing that we can configure here is the network configuration. I hit configure. And what that's gonna do is gonna pop up another window where we can configure some more details around the network and specific for each frequency band. So what the minimum data rate we wanna use, the number of SSIDs and how many per radio. You can also configure a few other options here, but I'm just going to leave that on defaults for now. Hit close and I'm really excited because I'm just about to hit create a plan. So what I need to do now is literally just simply hit create. We get one more message that pops up. I hit OK. And now you can take a sip on your cup of coffee or your cup of tea or whatever it is you like to drink whilst we watch the dancing APs do our design for us across multiple floors. And what we see that's happened here is the auto planner has gone through 3,310 iterations to design us for 28 access points. And we can see that our network help is passing on five and six gigahertz at 97% or above, which is just amazing. And now we can see that the access points have been placed and all of our channels have also been configured for us. So if I just go to the view option and turn on our radios and channels, we can see that all of the channels have been configured for our access points and we can see that they are placed and now don't get me wrong we might need to tweak a few of the positions of the access points just slightly from when we've gone on site and we've done our uh, visual inspection and we know where we can and we can't mount access points we may need to move some of the ap's just slightly so why don't we take a look at the six gigahertz band on this floor and then let's have a look at some of the positions of the ap's on the other floors so if you go up to the fourth floor let me just zoom out so we can see the positions of our access points we can see where the ap's have been placed we can see our network help is passing and that's on six gigahertz how about five gigahertz again five gigahertz as well passing now finally the fifth floor let me just zoom out again and we can see the position of our ap's we would just need to slightly tweak a couple of them to get them into the exact locations that we would want to be able to mount them in the positions that we know we can from going on site and just simply from a click of a few buttons we've got the right amount of access points in pretty much the exact locations that we would want to mount them really nicely and easily from just using the auto planner feature it honestly blew my mind how accurate and how good the designs were when I first started to use the auto plan at all. I compared it to some of my designs that I'd done before and it did just as good of a job. So I know you're probably really excited to go ahead now and start using the auto planner yourself to design some high performing wireless networks. So please go ahead and use the new feature.